Have a go at this rather pleasant woodland scene that I've done a composite of now from the Dales and uh, three pheasants that I took when photographing up there. Uh, rather seasonal pictures that we're going to do at the moment. And I'm going to use my acrylics to start off with and also rollers and then work into brushes as well. And these little rollers, which come quite cheaply, you can get in different sizes, be very handy for doing some of the background effects in acrylics, these lovely soft pastel shades we're going to have behind the trees. I'm going to use my normal acrylic set, filberts, nylon. Um, and a little bit of sponge there in case I need it as well, you see. Well, I'm going to mix my colours first with a brush. In this case I want these lighter colours here, so I'm going to start with a quite light pink. So a bit of white, plenty of water. So I'm fairly thin paint at the moment, fairly transparent. A little touch of my pink. A wee touch of yellow into that just to get things going. More white. A little more pink, that should do it nicely, and let's see what we can get with that. And we'll just start building up behind here. Can't see the colour much at the moment because of the white of the uh, canvas. But it is coming in behind here, and I'll add a little light blue into that later but at the moment. You can just see it going very thinly over the um, canvas, over the drawing, right through to here, to backgrounds at first. Mix it more when I need it. Lovely soft background effects that I'm going to need. And I can still see my, my drawing through it, you see, this is the beauty. Remember that we can put them um, oils over acrylics, but we can't put the acrylics over the oils. Well, we shouldn't because it's likely to lift afterwards. I'm going to actually cover most of this with this light colour at first and I'm going to gradually come into it then and blend the colours even with the uh, sponge. This isn't for speed as much as it's for effect because I do want to get some beautiful soft pastel shoes and effects back here. Okay, now I'm going to gradually add blues to that. A broken colour, so I'll let that go all the way through there. Now I want to gradually get a bit uh, stronger with these colours. A little bit more pink in there again, so I'll get more and more subtle. Let's keep adding our colours. Building it up to overlay almost in a, a broken colour technique. These colours one across each other here. Look at this beautiful soft background colour. Now I'll start to add my more golden warms. So I'll come in with some yellow ochre now. Gradually coming warm as it comes into the foreground. So these warms now just starting to show, which I push back those lovely soft colours I've done earlier. And we can use ordinary sponges to get a lot of this texture. This is to get the, the much softer background effects before I start on my, which I'm going to be doing soon, slightly more textural sponge work. So I think I've just about got my, my background in there now. Going to add a little more the yellow. We've got these various textures of sponges that we can try and use to uh, get the leaf textures as we come forward. But before I do that, I should put a few more highlights in and then paint in some of the branches in the background because these layers are coming over. Right, it's time to start working on the branches and twigs now, so I'm going to use this rigger and this fine round to start painting in all the little trees and uh, twigs in the background. Start by mixing my dark. In this case, I'm going to want to Quite a deep blue, so I'm going to take a little bit of Prussian blue, a touch of black, some ultramarine, 
I don't normally use black, but as I'm working with acrylics here, and they're going to go a bit softer anyway, I think they'll be ideal for this. I've still got some of my marks in from the uh, from the drawing, so I can just see where I'm going in places. Consistency of paint, as I say, is quite important. We've got to have paint that's uh, not too thick or it won't go on, not too thin, we can see through it. established our little branches now again it's back to texture but before we do the texture I need to come into some of the slightly lighter areas of these <coughs> trees so I'm going to take a little bit of cerulean a little bit of uh, ultramarine a wee touch of the pink the rose just find some of the cooler edges of these trees that are coming around here, they're not just black. Oh, I want to, uh, while this is drying, I want to paint out lots of this white. So I'll take some burnt sienna and we'll simply get in here and coat this burnt sienna and blue I think we'll use on this. So oh, that's dark, that's right. We'll get in and coat this uh, whole thing with a coat of this colour, just to get rid of the white. And I can use oils for that or whatever, but the thing is to get rid of this distraction of this uh, white canvas. The same with uh, the pheasants, let's give them a, a coat of colour, nothing too strong, just a thin glaze of yellow ochre and a little sienna just to remove the white at the moment and we can paint over them later and you can still see the pencil marks just showing through. Now we're 
going to go back to our texture of work and start using a bit of sponge to start putting back in these leaves up here and so on. I'm going to make up a nice yellow green. Of course there are various brushes for special effects as well. Here for instance you can see a brush which has a, a very uh, rough texture at the end. Um, not one you'd be able to paint a fine line with at all, but these specialist brushes, this one in particular, great for things like these ferns where it's going to give me a furry effect. Well spread out first, get a good bashing. You found this with hakes as well, that new hakes are not much good. But a nice battered old hake is far more useful than a, a more smart one that just gives a blob of paint. If we make a mistake and put a bit too much of something on, we can go back over with the darks afterwards, there's no problem. Even into the blues. I need to go back to sponges again. So we're still sponging, try different sponge this time. Put a bit more yellow in. Lots of building up, so we've totally done tons and tons of detail. I suppose in a way we have, but not have to paint every individual mark in. Now, got a lot more gold and gold, so we'll take some yellow ochre again. A bit of white. We've got to start doing the same little stuff actually on the pathway too. Start building this up with um, textures for the leaves in the background. Not worrying too much about going over the facets there because we're going to come back in detail on those later. But you can see how it's gradually drawing out layers of leaves forward into the painting. Before I finish this evening and it dry off, I'll just put a little bit more of the light yellows and green on. I just want to show you just how lovely that can look. So I'm going to make a little bit of cream with my lemon yellow and add a touch of viridian to it. And let's just see when we do get some of that lighter green on how effective it's going to be. There you, go, you see. Bring a few of those stronger greens just a little bit into there because this is the closer sunlight and what we want to do is get this feeling of receding light. Lighter shapes here. Catch the sunlight coming through. It'll be happening into some of this as well. It's almost enough for tonight because the light's getting very low here and I can hardly see what I'm doing. Well, since we last worked on this, I've put in a lot more details, the texturing, and I've repainted some of the brushes on top because they were lost with the texture going over. And I've just started now to put in some of these grasses and textures. This brush is very useful for that because this is one of those special effects brushes which you see breaks up into little fine furry bits. This is great for the moss and um, now I'm going to go back to my little uh, filbert and we'll start painting in these leaves. I'm still using the acrylics and I shall paint the pheasants after the leaves but I'm going to have to go back into this um, with oils because I want a lot stronger colours and although the acrylics are lovely they do not quite ever give the vibrance of the, uh, the oils. I'm going to start mixing up the um, orangey browns with the leaves. Start with some yellow ochre, a little touch of burnt sienna, and use it as a pure colour at first. If the colour's on my brush and I see it somewhere else, for instance in the pheasants, then I'm going to use that colour. 
So wherever you make a colour and see it, then use it again rather than have to mix it up while you're at it. And I need the underpainting of these pheasant feathers to go on before I think about any oils even. these colours are going to be coming down into the leaves as well so it's as well to establish this now and find some of these so that I know what I'm going to be using later as well and that helps us to establish which colour is right one to another again by using an impressionist or slightly pointless style and making the textures actually Recreate the bird. I'm using mauve at the moment or purple. As you see, so far I've managed to get away with using actually just the one brush. Surprising what we can get done just with a filbert, which is a lovely brush. This might have want taking down a fraction later, just to again establish the colours at the moment. Right, and back to our leaves. Gradually getting lighter and lighter with my little bits of leaf that are reflecting light. Watching carefully as to whether they're warm or cool, browns or purples. See, we're well on with the painting this morning, um, and I've done, uh, so far I've worked only with acrylics, uh, and I want to brighten up this a bit more later, but I just need to carry on a bit more with the acrylics before I finish. Uh, this bird's looking rather flat at the moment, and uh, we've got more ferns and things to, to do in the distance, and also a few more blues to put in as well. I'm going to use my filbert again. And we'll just start looking at some of these bluer marks around here, so... A little bit of uh, cerulean blue, a wee touch of the green, just to bring it back a bit. And let's start looking at some of these slightly bluer, cooler turquoise greens in here, which will make the warm greens look even warmer, and that's what we're playing with. Rough against smooth, light against dark, cool against warm. Always these things going on and, and playing one colour against another, which will bring out also these pheasants, because the coolness of these leaves um, the green is the opposite to the red, as Constable used in his paintings. You will nearly always notice in Constable's paintings somewhere a little red figure. And the reason for that has always been that he wants to play the opposite in the colour circle, a complementary colour of red against the green. As I do in my beach scenes when I play the purple against the yellow for shadows. So we'll bring this cool all the way down, surprising where it gets to. You don't think it's in the leaves. People tend to, especially the amateurs, tend to uh, paint green grass, blue sky, brown soil, but it isn't like that. Little bits of colour going on in these. I've got to find some of them in the rocks and things there as well to do. If, if you're um, Painting a picture, everything should be 
of the same way normally. I'm not saying there aren't exceptions to the rules as there are in almost everything, but um, if you suddenly start painting something quite differently, it will stand up like a sore thumb. We could finish the whole painting in the acrylics if it came to it, but I think it might be nice just to use some of the strength of the oils coming into this. So let's do that now then, with a very fine brush, especially on the, on the birds, we'll move on to um, some of the slightly stronger colours of the oils, just to bring it out. So we'll close up our little homemade Stay Wet palette, put a little bit more water back in just for the moment, so that it just stays, stays wet, just like that. And those paints will stay like that for, for weeks. And we'll change our brushes over as well. And bring on the oils. I shall only need fairly fine brushes for this job. Right, we'll do some brush work and we'll do some sponging as well. Uh, let's look at these pheasants at first and we'll just look at one or two of the lighter colours that we want to just paint details over. Little areas here of very light cream that have disappeared. So we'll take a little bit of white, tiny touch of Chrome yellow. I'm just going to take that down a tab of some yellow ochre because this is our final and I really do want to make this quite a representational piece. So you can really see what I'm doing, let's zoom in on these birds and we'll just use this very small brush to tickle in these little half moon shaped feathers. And this paint hopefully is not going to sink like the acrylic has been doing because it's the oils. It's a stronger pigment altogether. So just pick out the birds, you see. Wherever it's lighter as well up here, we'll, we'll use, a little, use a little bit more of it up here as well. Right, now we've changed colour and we're going to go to um, <coughs> cadmium orange. Deep one at the moment, we'll just use that pure and see if we can uh, bring out the lovely golden feathers here a little bit more. With this being a lot more orange, it will make the um, leaves behind seem less brown and garish and more subtle. I thought we might actually need some of this colour in those leaves. I can see that now. I know I'm doing it. I can see quite a few oranges coming in these leaves here, which need brightening up from the sunlight. So we'll bring in these oils wherever we need them. Take a bit of cadmium red now. Put a bit of red down here. Nice bright pheasant. And a little bit more around his eye, perhaps, as well. Right down to a cooler red. A bit more, looks like a bit of purple now. I really want to feel for these. And we've got to start looking at the <coughs> these lovely blues that I did earlier with the um, acrylics have sunk. I'm going to bring out those colours again with a bit of oil. So some cobalt, a little bit of uh, cerulean now. really make that pheasant's head shine. The colours on my brush, some of those blues are coming in down here amongst the oranges. Look at that vibrance of colour we can get. Now those colours are only going to show if they have the dark against them. So let's take some Prussian blue. Dark 
very dark blue. And there's little spots of dark that are in the feathers that we need now to make these lights stand out against it. And now you see the wonderful effect we can get with the oils, which are just that bit brighter than these acrylics. And a little bit of brown with that because that dark wants warming up a fraction here. We'll move on now to the one below. Now still using our small brush, we'll take some of the cadmium orange again. Don't want to overdo it because say it would look out of place and it would make the birds look as if they're stuck on. Very deep. Some cadmium red now. These stronger colours, I'm hoping, will just pull it out. Make the bird <coughs> almost become three-dimensional. Let's move across to the other first. I don't think he's too far out. We'll put a little bit more cobalt just into the blue there for a start. It's a bit more green. I think that's the pheasants uh, about as far as I want to go with them. Now I need to look at the uh, the greens and the textures also in the um, leaves where I want to be a bit stronger. You can see the richness that we're getting in, in, in control now. Let's start looking at the ferns here a bit. Um, I'm going to take some yellow green, some bright green a little bit of white and really see how much stronger I can bring up some of these greens. Got to have just the right consistency, so I've got just the amount of terps that I require. And I think you'd be surprised just how bright we can make these, and how we can get the highlights going on these now, look. And it will make things really start to pull together. Little bits of fern and which the acrylics were very nice, but they were sinking a bit too much. And these paints, oils, just give that a bit more vibrance. Still working on these various ferns, the yellow greens and so on. I want to start catching sunlight coming through these ferns. On the top left we have these very strong leaves and now if I put them in with the oils you see there's how much stronger they could actually be than they were, or than they are. Let's really give that some money. And get these autumn colours going. You see how it's more vibrant and stronger it really is then. Got the light sparkling down through these trees. And these stronger greens are pushing the other back, you see. Right, I think it's time now to start looking back at the um, leaves. A little flat ended brush for this. And mix up some burnt sienna and some yellow ochre. Because this time with the oils it's going to be a lot stronger. Let's just try that pure first of all. You can see the, the difference in strength already. I'm going to take some of that with a little bit of white, make it much lighter red. And I think I need to go a bit warmer still, so I'm going to take a bit of cadmium red and orange and bring that into it, especially here in the foreground, to also link, I think, with the pheasant. I'm hoping it will. There we are, look and um, it'll bring the pheasant out and forward because the colours will, will relate to it. I don't think we're that far off completing this painting because otherwise we could go on forever. Just playing with colours backwards and forwards now to just try and get this right, not easy. And I reckon that puts us about there.